This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoyenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Yo, what's up? We're in our garage, and finally it is here. The Tesla Model 3 Highland. I'm going to do a range test now. I'm just preparing for it now. So, um, one thing is that uh, we don't have any uh, uh, OBD adapter hooked up. Uh, in order to connect on OBD on Highland, uh, you know the sexy button guys, they have a nice video explaining how to do it. You have to pop some panels open here and then you connect uh, in here somewhere. But then uh, that OBD port is not powered, so then you need another adapter to power the, the commander that they need for the sexy buttons. But also for, for example, uh, Sky My Tesla or whatever, right? So uh, I don't have that adapter, that's why we don't have any Sky My Tesla stuff goodies yet. We just have to go with whatever we have uh, on the screen and also the service screen. What is it? No, okay. It claims that charging is finished, but it's still not finished yet. Let me show you. As you can see, we are at 100%. It says charging complete, but it's still pulling two amp, one kilowatt here. Um, this oh, shit. Um, So we see on the EC app that we are pulling uh, 600 watts. But let's see now. If I stop climate control, What's gonna happen then? It's still pulling something. See, ah, oh, okay. Wow, was well, it only pulling 100 watt for uh, HVAC? Really? And here you can see that the battery temperature is 23 to 27 degrees Celsius. It must have preheated the battery earlier, kept it nice and warm in the garage. Now it's, well, it claims to be 18, but as you can see on the wall, it's 12 degrees Celsius. So we still had to wait a little bit before it starts, uh, it stops charging because I want to find out what the battery size of this Highline is. It should be the same as the previous gen. They haven't updated anything there. Okay, it's been sitting here balancing for about an hour. So I feel like going out to test now. So yeah, it's the HB battery status is still charging. So yeah, whatever. Um, we could just add 100 watt hour to the result. So yeah, let's unplug and go now. Whoa, look at this. We open the gate now. It visualizes the surroundings in 3D. Whoa, that is some serious shit, man. Whoa, huh? Alien technology for the wait. Does that does that correspond with the world? Yeah. Wow. Okay, let's check the weight first. Front axle. Nine eighty. All right. The whole car. 1940, okay, not too bad. Ah, uh, we're on the move, and uh, it is wet on the road today. That is a bit unusual. It's plus three degrees Celsius. Oh, can you see that there? Plus three degrees Celsius, wow. It has been minus 20, you know, minus 15, minus 20. Well, freaking auto high beam is going crazy, man. I'm gonna get so much flash in the face now. But yeah, so we actually have to cruise 124 kilometers per hour on the speed of the match 120. We have some Falcon tires, some non-original tires and rims. So, uh oh, that's a bit unfortunate that Muchkus didn't put on original rims here. Uh, okay, so we're now doing a consumption test. Yeah, we'll just drive north of it and then we turn back. Oh shit, we have uh, we have these uh, blinkers also, yeah, we can't see, but uh, we don't have stocks anymore. We have the freaking buttons on the steering wheel, which is a bad decision from Tesla. Oh, and then also the tire pressure is, uh, let me see here, yeah, 3.1 to 3.2 bars. All right, we're on the way back now, and man, Tesla vision, oh. Uh, it's super cringy because uh, Tesla Vision will enforce you to use uh, auto high beam with autopilot. Uh, of course, you can always disable it every time uh, manually, but uh, because I don't have auto lane change, then I have to uh, disengage autopilot every time I want to change lane like this, right? And then go back again, and then re engage autopilot. Wait, and also, this is weird, right? I mean, I can, I, I could, I could have sworn that I hear the clicking sound. Let me just show you now. Now we have not autopilot. I can move the microphone closer to the, to the button and I can click. Uh, 
it, it seems like the button is less sensitive. Uh, yeah, it, it's not like I'm some kind of noob here. I've been driving Plaid for a long time, which has the same input. Uh, you have to, it's super, super cl clumsy. You, in order to activate autopilot, you have to click on the scroll wheel. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm clicking on it now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, huh? How hard do I have to press it, man? I have to press it. I have to press the button like an old man. Mm, mm. There, yes. And then it bugs me. Look at this. Look at the road. I'm looking at the road. Oh, what the heck, man? And then, oh, yeah. It's hard to catch on camera, but the auto high beam is all over the place. You know, they're freaking. Oh, shit. It turns down the high beam <clears throat> too late. Or when I'm driving behind some cars, suddenly it would just fire up the high beam. Like, oh, shit, don't do that. You know, it's like I'm telling my daughter, like, no, don't do that. No, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, it's gonna, you're gonna hurt yourself. Or it's no, 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 it's dirty. Oh, look at that. What are you doing? Jeez, the mother of Jesus. Oh, shit. Uh, man, <clears throat> you just have to get the sexy button. And then, yeah, because with sexy button, there's a feature you can disable. It's annoying, super cringy. You just disable something in there, and then every time you activate autopilot, let me not do that shit. Oh, what the heck, man? Seriously? Uh, oh. You could you could annoy you could annoy other people. You could even confuse other drivers. Like, why why are you f firing up the high beam like that? Oh man. All right, we're done with the 120 test, and it was 226 watt hour per kilometer. Yeah, remember, remember that we have non-original rims, that's one thing, and also it was quite windy today, despite that it was uh, fairly warm, yeah. So, okay, let's do the 90 test then. But I noticed that the cabin light in the Highland is a lot brighter than before. I like it because, especially when you have a uh, dark interior, then uh, everything tends to just be dark in here, but now, more light. You. You can even probably see it that when I have this shot now at night, okay, there's some street light, but it looks brighter than before in previous generation Model 3. But let's test the sound system, shall we? Okay, nice bass, nice details. Yeah, sounds good so far. And as usual, I use USB stick with the music, but there, there is no communication in the one USB-C here. I had to hook it onto the USB in the glove box where you have the USB-A for, for uh, dash cam. So that's kind of clumsy. But one thing I noticed about this song here, this, uh, yeah, is that the bass becomes overwhelming, plus that there's sounds like it's boomy and uh, non-linear. The bass is overwhelming, it just uh, overwhelms the rest of the music, really. Okay. sounds great except for the bass again is overwhelming in all the songs I tested now it's just too much I would probably tune it down to minus three when I tested it with minus three on the subwoofer it sounds a lot better at least w more balanced so it's not like I don't like bass I'm a bass guy but it's just that sometimes it gets, becomes too much here though we're gonna listen to some um, mid bass rattling especially the doors and there is some rattling here but let me see if I can find that other thing I heard okay I, I can't reproduce it now but I heard earlier it, it sounds almost like if the tweeter on the left side here 
is blown, which is weird because this is brand spanking new car. Um, maybe someone cranked up the volume too early because from what I heard the speakers, they need a little bit of time, like a, some burning time or whatever. Like you, you shouldn't be playing on the maximum volume in the beginning. You should, you know, play it for a while uh, until the, the, the membranes, they soften up and then you can crank the volume. So I'm not sure what the heck happened there, but uh, just whatever I observe. Um, and then last one now. Now this song has some deep bass and you can hear the deepness in the subwoofer. So that, that part I like. But again, too loud. <laughs> and uh, how do I put this? I mean, it, it, it's fairly punchy, but not as punchy as I've heard before in other cars. Plus it has that boominess. So, yeah, if I would rate the system, um, I'm not sure, man, I have mixed feelings about it. Maybe I give it a seven only. Yeah, I'm being strict today, but you know, I'm even a Tesla guy, but yeah, I, I can't give it uh, higher than that, unfortunately. We are now at Stong and uh, what the heck, man? Um, the windows are fogging only on this side here. Uh, see, yeah, the temperature went uh, fairly. I went on Stong like five minutes ago. We went quite quickly from plus four to minus four degrees Celsius. So I was like, okay, well, that's fine. And we get some fogging. And I didn't want to bother filming it because I figured out that uh, maybe the car will. Uh, Will, will cancel out this fog, but no, it has not disappeared yet. The way, are we sitting in a Chinese car? Are we sitting in a Korean car or is this a Tesla? Like, the Teslas I've driven in the past, they had no problem with fogging, but suddenly now, yeah, fogging, and I have HVAC on, ah, oh, come on. I have HVAC on automatic, so it should get rid of the fog by itself. And also it keeps bugging me because it seems like it has problems detecting the lines. But yeah, it has nothing. This happened already before the fog uh, up, up here, but uh, hmm. Uh, okay, maybe they don't have any fogs in California. It's almost 8 in the morning now. Sun is coming up soon. And uh, yeah, we have 50% battery. And see, we have spent 37 kilowatt hours, so it's likely that we get 74 kilowatt hour total then. Because in the Tesla, the state of charge scale is dead linear. Okay, and then consumption so far, we have to look at this number here, 167 watt hour per kilometer. Oh yeah, nice. Nice to see watt hour per kilometer again. <laughs> and here you can see the ambient light. Huh? It's nice. Except for that, it's, mo it's just for decoration. It doesn't illuminate anything in the interior. Also in the back there, you see there. So yeah, you can choose the color, but you cannot choose the intensity. Hmm. But the uh, good thing is that it doesn't uh, become too intensive at night. So uh, some cars, for example, EQS by default, it becomes too bright and have to tone it down. But here it seems like they have tuned it to be uh, not too bright. So it doesn't bother me too much. Now we're back at Minnesota and uh, the consumption was 161 watt hour per kilometer. Not too bad considering it's winter and we have wet roads. So does that mean that everything is bad about this car? No, not really. We have ventilated seats now and the suspension has been softened up and it's more comfortable. And we also have a bit of soundproofing all over the car. Plus we now have a double glazed window in the front and the back. So there's a lot of nice upgrades here along with the, okay, the, the ambient lights. Uh, but uh, I feel like there are also some downgrades, unfortunately, not only upgrades with this car. You see, every time I activate autopilot, I want to also adjust the speed to whatever, and then it beeps at me. I can't just blindly activate autopilot. Uh, it might not have the speed I want, and then I want to look over here, and then it always beeps at me, regardless. Well, and it's not just because I'm holding the camera. I also tried this without uh, shooting video. So it wasn't like this before. Uh, hopefully this is uh, only a Highland feature, not the pre-Highland feature, because it's uh, super annoying. No, 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 come on. No, and then sometimes, many times I can't. There, there, there. Okay. 
man. The beeps, the beeps. Stop, stop, stop. Okay, I'm gonna try to only look at the road then, and then whatever speed I activate with, it's gonna be that one I use. No, come on. Come on. No, come on. Can you activate autopilot? Uh huh. I just have to. Uh, I look. I was looking at the road. Shit. Okay, let's try again. There. Holding, holding, thing with holding. Look at the road. Look at the road. Look at the road. Jog, 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 jog. Uh huh. Then it does. Okay, but then I want to see what kind of speed I ended up with. Oh, okay, 87. Okay, well, let's cruise at 87 then. Wow, it's almost 10 in the morning now, and the sun is still really low. Uh, people wondering why I don't install a solar panel on the roof. Well, it's during winter that I need the, the free electricity. In summer, the electricity is dirt cheap anyway. And remember that we have 98%... No, no, actually, I checked now. 99% uh, renewable energy in Norway, yeah. 98% uh, is hydropower and 1% is wind. So, yeah. Why don't they get solar panel on the roof? We are right at the supercharger and uh, you see we spend 70 kilowatt hour. Well, there's no decimal here or anything. Uh, with 6%, so I estimated to 74.5 kilowatt hour. So that is on par with what we've seen before. So yeah, all good. We have tested now. Uh, we can plug in and check maybe charging speed. I've been preheating for a while. All right, 237. 253, oh, 250. Okay, but for how long? Ah, uh, okay, five seconds. Then it throttles. <laughs> well, well, well. Okay, before we go home, I need to clean the car. So, uh, yeah, we have this only location in uh, Yesheim. Konerud self wash. Um, and uh, we have Stau. Uh, wash Stau, yeah. Is this a new thing now? Uh, we have four cars. Well, actually, no, three cars in front of me. Uh, that the uh, Yaris came after me. Yeah, um, I could. Uh, not, the problem is that if I try to wash at home, uh, there will be lots of water and then that becomes ice in my driveway, so I don't want that. So yeah, for now, I have to wash over here. Eventually, I can wash outside my home when the temperature is higher. Finally, we washed the car and we're back home. And I mean, the car was clean when I washed it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, now it's dirty again. On the way from the washing place to home. Oh, sh uh. Uh, okay, uh, and also now suddenly it's plus five degrees Celsius, so everything is melting this place here has become super slippery oh shit uh and then watch out for talk ras which is uh uh talk means roof and ras is like uh i'm not sure what it means but we have so much snow on the roof there uh oh uh oh uh oh millionaire falcon is parked dangerously close to the roof now I, I park him further away so yeah by the way millionaire falcon is still available for rent guys if you want to experience him, you just contact Marcus Beal and you can rent a wonderful car. But anyway, let's do the summary inside the uh, Highland. So yeah, according to the range test today, it seems like we might have slightly higher consumption than even other uh, Model 3s we tried in the past. And you know, the Highland is supposed to have better aerodynamics, slightly better aerodynamics than before, but we still have the same drivetrain, the same battery, the same uh, thermal system with Octaval, you know? So uh, in that regard, yeah, there is only tiny improvement, but then since we have these uh, non-original rims, and tires then maybe that could be the reason why the consumption is higher because i know that nuke and hakoplita r3 and then r5 nowadays they are really efficient and also of course if you have the wheel caps we don't have it here so maybe that's why we don't get better efficiency and then as for battery size it's uh, the same as we have tested before so but it's not the 76 kilowatt uh, panasonic battery i don't know if they exist anymore uh, in the performance version maybe mm. okay but uh, yeah, so uh, don't buy the car expecting to get better range, at least a better efficiency. It should be more or less the same, maybe a slight improvement. Get it if you want better comfort 
or better styling, right? Space should also be the same, by the way. Um, and then you have to deal with the lack of stocks. <laughs> anyway, I think that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later. And then... And then... Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> no. And then... <laughs>